Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's my commercial photography website. It's a Squarespace one and I absolutely love it. They're easy to set up, they look amazing, there are hundreds of templates to choose from and they have first class customer support. If you want one too, then use this URL and the coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and in this episode, we're gonna take a look at memory cards. So, what are the important factors about memory cards for your cameras, DSLRs or videos, that type of thing? Well, there are three main things to consider. That is the type of memory card, the size of the memory card, and the speed of the memory card. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of memory cards. Let's first look at the type of memory cards. This size memory card is called a CF card. That stands for compact flash. This size is called an SD card. See, it's a bit smaller. And that's a uh, secure digital. And then there's also uh, another one that looks just like this called an SDHC, which is a secure digital high capacity card. Now, these are the two main type of cards. There are other ones. There's these little micro ones as well, these really tiny ones, which you get inside uh, camera phones and some other devices. A lot of video cameras are using this type of card as well. Um, in my Canon 5D Mark III, take a look there, it holds the CF memory card there, but it can also take an SD card and record simultaneously on that as well. On the Hasselblad medium format, takes a CF card in the side. Um, so there's different combinations, different things on different cameras and videos, etc. Now, the important things we need to know uh, regarding the uh, size, the speed, the type, and even durability that we're gonna look at in a second. Um, let's start with the size. This is very straightforward. It's just the amount of uh, gigabytes um, that you can fit, the amount of data. So this one is a 32 gigabyte card and this one is only an eight gigabyte card so we've got four times as much space than we have on the eight one there and the sd cards as well you've got a lot of storage space on those uh, some of these cards are now running up to 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes. I mean, some of these cards are horrendously expensive in the large file size, uh, large data sizes at the moment. Um, but the gigabytes obviously expresses how much data you can fit on the card, how many pictures you can fit on the card. So if you're shooting medium format images or raw files, large file sizes, then obviously a larger card is gonna be important so you can fit more pictures on it. The next important thing with uh, memory cards is the write and read speed. Now, the read speed uh, is important when you're offloading the images off the memory card, how quick they'll come off the card onto your computer when you're copying them. And the write speed uh, is even more important. That's the speed that the camera can send the data to the card. Basically, what's happening when you're taking a picture, uh, you might be shooting in raw mode, and on a camera like this, it might be 60 megabytes for one image or it might be 30 40 megabytes for an image on on this camera and it's sending those images to a buffer and then that buffer is then sending the image to the memory card now if you're shooting on a camera uh, at high-end dslr at five frames a second in raw mode then that's a hell of a lot of data you know you'll be shooting 30 uh, megabytes of data at five frames a second so sooner or later a slow card is not going to be able to keep up and the buffer will fill and then you won't be able to take any more pictures. So high speed cards are what you need when you've got high performance cameras or even with video. Video is often compressed and it might only be two megabytes uh, of data per second, but you've got 25 frames or 30 frames a second or other video formats with slow motion, you might have 120 frames per second. So the amount of data that's coming down the pipe basically has to go somewhere at the right speed. And that's where high speed memory cards come in. So how do you tell the speed in these memory cards? Well, again, it's quite simple. There's uh, three uh, main methods where they um, measure the speed. One, one of them is actually 
written on the card. So you can see this is a high speed one. It's 60 megabytes per second, it says there. And if we compare it to this one, see that one says 15 megabytes per second. So quite a bit slower. Now, other cards have it written in a different way. This one has 133. Uh, you'll see cards with 133, 200 times, 400 times, that sort of thing. So what does that mean? Well, that is basically a reference to a, a, an historical um, data measurement of 150 kilobytes per second. And it's basically the number times 150 kilobytes per second. So if this said 200 times speed, 200 times 150 kilobytes per second would give us about 30,000, I think, yeah, 30,000, and then that's 30 megabytes. So a 200 times card would be equivalent to 30 megabytes per second, but as I said, this one's a 60 megabyte per second card, this one. So uh, there we've got equivalent of, I suppose, 400 times speed on that card. Other cards are measured sometimes in a class rating, like 1 to 10, and a 10 is the better one, and a 10 is equivalent to about 45 megabytes per second, I, I think, somewhere around there anyway. So basically, to cut it short, you really need to think about high-speed cards and high-volume cards if you're shooting big files rapidly or a lot of data on video, uh, high-level data. Remember that video on uh, data is getting bigger and bigger, especially as some video cameras now offer 4K. You've got more resolution, more data. That data stream, again, is uh, requiring a faster recording speed, write speed to the card. If you're just shooting JPEGs and you're not shooting them that quickly, then a high speed card and a large volume card is not really that important to you. But most of you as serious photographers who are probably shooting in raw mode, probably got a decent camera somewhere around 16, uh, 16 megapixels, or those of you on medium format, then large volume cards and uh, fast data speeds are gonna be essential. Uh, other things to consider on these things are durability of the cards. Um, these cards are very tough. It's not like film in the old days. Film in the old days, you're very careful with it. You couldn't get wet. X-raying it was a problem. You don't get any of those problems with these cards. You can X-ray them. Um, you can put them near a magnetic force. That's not going to affect these either. Um, there was even a story I posted on our, our Facebook page recently of some divers that found a camera at the bottom of the sea uh, it had been there for two years and they, they brought it back up, got the card out, cleaned it up and still got all the pictures off the card. And from the pictures, they even managed to find the owner of the card. And that was a card that was sat at the bottom of the ocean for two years. So these things are very, very durable. Um, they are susceptible to uh, damage by electric static shocks, apparently, and by high impact shocks on a hard surface, apparently, as well. Uh, I've dropped my cards many, many times on high impact surfaces, hard surfaces, never actually had a problem. Uh, I've even put one through the washing machine cycle once and didn't have a problem getting the data off. The other great thing with these sort of cards is that if you delete the images off of them, you can actually retrie retrieve the images with um, card rescue software. Uh, even some of the big manufacturers like SanDisk and Lexar, I think they have their own software so you can retrieve deleted images off of these cards. So they're certainly a lot more durable than film um, and they've got a very long uh, life cycle, hundreds of thousands of write and read uh, times on it, so many that you probably lose the card before you actually ever wear it out. So great little things uh, for storing your images on. Obviously the key thing, the most important thing is once you've captured your amazing images onto your card is copy the card to your computer and then make a backup of that so that your images are kept safely. So that's a brief overview on memory cards. Um, obviously the price ranges are affected greatly by higher speeds and higher volumes. I mean, I've, I've seen some prices for 500 gigabyte cards that have got like 120 megabyte uh, read and write speed. Prices like $1,000, I mean, crazy stuff, you know, more expensive than some cameras. But you do get what you pay for with memory cards, so uh, keep that in mind. Hope that was useful. 
Thanks very much.